Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you uh, on this Friday morning, uh, hopefully finding you in a situation or position in which you have optimized the time that you have over the course of the week uh, to progress yourself towards those things that you, uh, you, you deem worthy of your energy and your effort, your, your, your desires, your needs, your wants. It is, you know, my hope that you are consistently investing yourself in those things that are worthy of your time. Uh, I often say, um, you know, that uh, while most people believe time is the most valuable asset, I'm a believer that your mind is your most valuable asset. But time is very close. It's limited. And how you use it is immensely important to the results that you get in your life. Uh, there are 86,400 seconds in a day. What you do in that time, how you invest in those seconds is immensely integral to the, pro uh, the production of the res uh, results that you get in the future. In other words, um, what you do with your 86,400 seconds is going to show up in the future as a part of your destiny, as a part of the circumstances that you encounter, as a part of your reality. You have to invest wisely. You have to see your time for the valuable entity or commodity that it is. Um, I don't believe in leisure time. I believe that's a time to rest. I believe that's a time to play. But I believe even when you're resting, uh, sleep is an Im immensely important uh, part of the process of rejuvenation and restoration and healing. So even when you're resting, it has purpose. Uh, but time shouldn't be wasted. To me, resting at the right amount of time is important. It's not a waste. But there are things that you do that waste your time that cost you. And so I'm real big on that. So I'm hoping that you uh, optimize your time. If not, start to focus and build rituals that will allow you to optimize your time. Use those 86,400 to do something uh, and invest in yourself in a way that down the line, you are reaping the benefits and the rewards of properly investing in your time. One of the greatest investments that you can make. Uh, what I want to talk to you about about real briefly this morning is the need to keep going. Um, you know, a lot of times I talk to you about, you know, some of the techniques I use, some of the processes that I go through myself and with my clients. But then I just want to talk to you from the heart. I want to talk to you person to person, uh, human to human, however you want to look at it. Um, while there are those that tend to present themselves as either having arrived or have having always been on it or whatever the situation is, those that present themselves as having it all together, never having uh, any difficult struggles or heartache, you know, I'm not that person. I'm a person that uh, fortunately had the right people around me at the right time that allowed me to experience some things in life that most people haven't. Um, I've been very uh, fortunate at times in my life when it comes to finance. Uh, it's something that I've developed uh, uh, an astute understanding of. Uh, I've been able to do some things in business. Uh, and, you know, obviously as an author, uh, I've, I've experienced a lot of successes, but along the line of experiencing those successes, I've experienced failures. And I'll tell you this, when you really look at it and you examine it, I was doing this the other day, I was just sitting back and I said, okay, how did I get here? How did I get here? How did I get here? And I'm looking at these different milestones that I've hit in my life, the businesses, the finance, the, you know, the houses, whatever it was that I looked at and said, I want it. And then I went out and got, I was looking at it and I said, okay, how did I get here? And what I realized is I got there through a, a, a long line of failures, mistakes, difficulties, and, and, and heartaches. And, 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 and what I looked at is something that I have been teaching for years 
I looked at it and what I saw was that First and foremost, there is no circumvention of life's struggles. You are not going to uh, consecutively and consistently avoid the vicissitudes of life. Change is coming, disruption is coming, delay is coming, disappointment is coming, heartache is, heartache is coming, loss is coming. You do not avoid that. I tell people all the time, pain is inevitable. Suffering, on the other hand, is a choice. So you can't avoid the pain, but what you can do is understand and have a perspective that allows you to properly analyze, evaluate, and categorize the pain or the disruption or the, or the heartache or, 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 the, or the micro failures that are part of life in a proper framing so that it doesn't break you down, so that it doesn't destroy you, so that, that it doesn't cause you to back up or to relent and then understand the one thing that I have embedded in my mind when I say, okay, man, that was a lot of stuff I went through to get here. What caused me to get here? And over here, that was a lot of stuff that I went through. And I'm looking at all these things as I evaluate it because I'm, I'm just breaking down and I'm looking, okay, this is what I'm teaching people. And this is what I've studied and I've seen other people do. This is what I've modeled in my own life. But let's see, when I go back and I evaluate it and I look at it retrospectively, what really happened? And what I find is, man, there were times I was told no a lot more than I was told yes. There were doors shut in my face. There were people who talked about me. There were way more people who didn't believe in me than people who believed in me. Uh, there were times I made dumb decisions, dumb mistakes. There are still times I make bad decisions. There are still times I do things or overextend myself and put myself in a bind because that's just the way I'm wired. And then I have to work myself out of it, which is extra work. But it's a part of the process. And process always precedes promise. You've heard me say that before. You don't get to obtain and function and live in the promise without first enduring the process. That's a problem that a lot of us deal with is we don't want to go through the process. We don't want to have to deal with heartache. We don't want the disappointment. We don't want, we want uh, this miraculous presentation uh, of the promise dropped in our laps while we circumvent the struggles and the vicissitudes of life. And it doesn't happen that way. What you've got to do, and when I went back and I looked at my life, and I said, okay, if I had to pick out one thing, one, one thought, one mindset, one idea that is the catalyst behind me being able to do the things I've done. Because see, when I finished my first book, which I'm on book 20 now, when I finished my first book, I was told consistently and over and over again that I couldn't publish even though it was well written and it was and it was powerful and it and it and it, and it was a a resource to a certain issue, it was not what people really were going to buy in a large, uh, you know, in you know, in a large way because it was not non-fictional. Non-fictional is what sells. People love novels. It wasn't non-fictional, um, and it was basically addressing a small group. The name of the book was The Invisible Father, Reversing the Curse of a Fatherless Generation, which is still in uh, distribution with Barnes and Noble, Sony Books, and a few others uh, uh, as a digital book. Um, I'm actually thinking about going back and bringing each book back in print um, uh, as paperbacks over the course of the next 18 months. But I was told I couldn't. And so what, what, how, how, how do I end up to, you're not gonna publish this book after I've gone and put all my heart into it and, and, and really, really, you know, gave myself because see that book came from the transparency of my own life, not knowing my father, being reared from a baby by my great grandfather and great grandmother, but not ever meeting my father. The first time I saw him was in his casket at his wake and funeral and not really having a relationship with my mother in the sense of mother-son relationship. Uh, you know, this, this book was huge to me. It was a, a bearing of my soul. It was a, 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 a very cathartic process. And so I wrote it and then here it is and I can't get it published. I mean, this is not how I envisioned it. And, and, and I, I'll go back and I look, okay, what was it that said, okay, I'm not gonna stop. I'm not gonna give up. What was it? And it simply is, 
once I set my mind on doing something, I refuse to quit. I refuse to give up. And that one thought that gets me through everything that I encounter that seems bigger than me at the moment is I'm built for this. I remind myself that in my design, I'm built for every challenge that I'm going to face, that the very way that the almighty designed the universe to operate is that when you meet a challenge, you're built for it. It may take you hard work. It may take persistence. It may take you will, being willing to stand and go through the hardships and the struggles and, and, and the disappointments of getting through it, but you're built for it. It's not going to destroy you. It'll make you stronger. It'll make you wiser. It'll, it'll, it'll develop a greater capacity to become focused and fixed on your point of reference, but it will not destroy you. And that's the thing that I got. It's like, okay, you got a choice, Rick. You can either give up or you can fight. And every time I've chosen to fight, and there's a part, if you go to the site uh, at rickwallacephd.link, uh, there's a, a, a tab that says Warrior's Creed, and it's the creed that I live by. It's an adaptation of a couple of different creeds, the Navy SEALs creed and the creed of, uh, of uh, Christian men that I took and adapted. And it, 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 it's the warrior's creed. And it's a part at the end of it that says that if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. And if I'm still breathing and I'm still in the fight, then there's a chance for me to win. And I have this mindset of no surrender, no retreat. I will not relent. I will not turn back. I will not give up. I'm not letting go. I'm going to fight until I get through it. I'm going to get knocked down. I expect to get knocked down. If I'm not getting knocked down, I'm not moving against something strong enough to really elevate me towards the thing I'm things I'm trying to accomplish. If I'm never meeting resistance that pushes my back against the wall, that knocks me off my feet, I'm not really challenging myself. I'm not really stretching myself. I'm sitting up playing safe. I'm sitting up hiding in the corner of comfort. And you cannot, uh, you can't build character in comfort. You can't sit up and grow strength in comfort. You can't go in the gym and be comfortable and build anything get stronger, get, 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 get faster, get more explosive, being comfortable. You got to develop a mindset that engages the challenges it, 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 it physically in the gym that says, I've got to be uncomfortable to get to where I'm trying to get. I've got to be willing to, to be at a point where I'm breathing hard and, 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 and reaching for breath. I got to be at heart where my muscles are burning and, 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 and releasing lactic acid and, 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 and causing some discomfort. If I truly want to see growth in, in areas of strength and power and size and whatever else it is you're looking for in the gym, it's the same thing in life. If I'm not meeting any challenges, if I'm not really truly being pushed against the wall, I'm not really growing. It's not until I sit up and say, you know what, that's not big enough, got to get bigger. And I go out there, and the other thing, one thing, let me stop, let me digress for a minute. Never measure yourself against the progress or position or status of another person. Never, I say it again, measure yourself based on the position, the status, uh, or situation of another person. The only person that you're competing against, the only thing you're competing against is your own potential. That's the only thing you need to focus on. Stop worrying about what the next person is doing. Stop worrying about where they're at. Stop worrying about what they're thinking about you. The only thing you should be looking at is what am I built for right now? Am I pushing myself to the limit? Am I maximizing my potential? Am I driving myself with everything I have to be all that I can be today? And I know I've got more capacity than I'll wake up to because optimizing capacity creates more capacity. So when I push myself to the brink where I see it, it's nothing left there today, I wake up with more tomorrow because that's how you stretch yourself. And if you've ever looked at anything that you stretch, it has a certain capacity, but when you stretch it, 
it gets more capacity. You stretch it, it gets more compa capacity. And the more you stretch, the more capacity it has. And it's the same thing with your life. When you start to push yourself and you start to stretch yourself, you're going to see that you've got more capacity to endure more, to go through more, to survive more, to win more. But I'm going to tell you something. When I look back at my life and I looked at all of these awesome things that I've experienced in my life, and right now, the greatest thing that I've experienced is being married to the most wonderful woman in the world uh, coming up on a year. And to look at my life in, in, in retrospect and in, 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 in juxtaposition to how it was before she came along and to look at all the things I was able to accomplish uh, before she got here and then to look up and say, okay, now that I have this final piece to the puzzle, that there's absolutely no end to what's possible. But then I had to look and see what I had to go through to get her. I, I, I looked at me and, 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 and decisions in relationships, poor decisions, poor behavior, poor responses, impatience, a bunch of things that, 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 that took me down a road that, that I, 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 while I'm not proud of it, I understand what it meant and did for me. And I lived in it. I moved in it. I operated in it. And then I remained patient and fixed. And the thing that got me to the point to where I was ready to be married to this woman, to which to me is my greatest accomplishment. When I sit up and I look at that, I look at the fact that it wasn't Rick making all of the right decisions. Rick never having any hardships or difficulties. Rick having it all figured out. What it is, is Rick simply had an idea of what it was he wanted. And then he started to understand in order to have something like this, I've got to be a person like this. And so I began to look at myself and say, wait a minute, there are some things that need working on here. There are some things that need working on here. In order to get there, I've got to get this right. And I started to look at it. And I, and I made some mistakes and I fixed some things. I changed some things. I made some adjustments. But the one constant thing was I refused to quit. I refused to give up. When she didn't come uh, in the first year, when she didn't come in the second year, she was 12 years in the making. From the, 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 the divorce to, to the marriage, what was actually 16 years in the making. I, I, I literally didn't get married. I said, okay, I don't got this marriage thing. I done screwed this up twice. And, 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 and I don't have it figured out. And that's how book number four came. The research and the understanding and just looking at the history of marriage, looking at relationships, looking at where I faltered, looking at what I did, and, and understanding how to properly enter a relationship and understanding when you are ready to truly be in a committed relationship. That's how When Your House Is Not a Home, book number four came to being. And then I said, okay, I understand it now, but am I ready? And so I said, no, I'm not getting married. And then when I found her, she'll tell you, I gave her fits. I wore her out because I wanted to make sure because like I, I, I've told my friends, anybody around me, I'm dying with this woman and she dying with me, one of them, and, and, you know, and I'm hoping that I proceed her because I don't want to have to deal with that. That's kind of selfish. But I, 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 I want to see her live a long life. I want to see her really, truly get the benefit from the hard work and the consistency she's invested in growing and healing in her life. And so the one thing that is, though, that I'm committed to this, not because I think I got this great thing and it's never going to go wrong, it's never going to be hard. I know challenges are coming. I know it's going to be difficult. The difference is now I look at my marriage in the same way I look at everything else. And I look at it as the ultimate test. It's the ultimate challenge. No place is going to challenge you like your marriage. No place is going to call on you to be selfless like a marriage. No place is going to call on you to put others before yourself like the marriage. It is consistently asking you to be something outside of yourself in order for the greater good. And it is the ultimate builder of integrity, the ultimate build, builder of, 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 of the type of mindset and energy you need to have to be an impact in the world. And when I was doing the research for When Your House Is Not a Home, I read a book by Gary Thomas called Sacred Marriage. And in this book, well, actually on the book, the entire context of how you are to approach reading the book is set up with one question. 
What if God's intent for marriage wasn't so much to make you happy as it was to make you holy? And I sit back when I read it and I said, wow. How many of us go into marriages and committed relationships talking about what we're going to get out of it? What they got, they can cook, they can clean, they got it going on. She got this great job, but he got this great job. He's a provider, he's all this. But you're not thinking about what you're bringing to the table and what that marriage is going to demand on you. One of the greatest killers, now, now, now this to tell you that finances are, are the number one causes of divorce, but the greatest killer of relationships are unchecked expectations. Expectations based off of unrealistic ideas of the person you're getting involved with. Your, you know, and, and, and I blame a lot of it on the romantic, the romanticizing of marriage, which started in like the 13th century and then became real huge with all these novels. Uh, the demand that it puts on the marriage and away from covenant and responsibility. I know I'm kind of digressing, but I had to for the point I'm making. In all of this, it was about preparation. It was about not quitting. It wasn't about having all the answers. It wasn't about me being perfect. It wasn't about me having it all right. When I went back, I actually made more wrong moves than right moves. It's just the one thing about me is when I made a wrong move, I didn't quit on myself. I didn't give up on myself. I didn't look at it and say, well, you screwed that up. You're never going to be. There's no such thing as never going to be with me. I'm going to become everything that I've set my mind to become. Failure, ultimate failure is not an option. If I got to fail 55 times to win that one time, the win is worth it. Hell, that's how I said it. I set these huge goals that I am not probably going to hit in the time frame I hit it. I'm probably going to stumble, trip, fall, roll over. It's going to be me saying, I'm going to get it. And I'm going to tell you, and a lot of people are looking at me and they're going, you can't do it. And I'm like, that's all right, I got it. But what will happen is I might not hit it in that 90-day mark, might not hit it in six months, might not even hit it in a year, but maybe maybe 18 months, two years down the line, I'm there. And when I get there, what I shot for was so damn big that it was worth the wait. It was worth fighting for. It was worth not quitting. It was worth going through all the heartache, the disappointment, the delay, the people talking about you, the people laughing at you, the people degrading you and belittling you because you said something and they see something different. That's, that's it. I'm, I'm going to leave on this note. Stop letting people define you by the moment you're in. First of all, don't let the random opinions of others define you. Second of all, stop allowing people to speak into your life based on your momentary situation. Because what you should be looking at is where you're going. And you should be fighting with a mentality and a mindset, understanding that if I just don't quit, destiny will answer the bell. Listen to me what I'm telling you. The definition of destiny, the most simple definition I ever heard was that no matter how hard you try to stop it, you only ensure that it happens. So every heartache, every disappointment, every obstacle, every enemy, every person talking behind your back, everything that's in front of you was only put there to make sure you have everything inside of you built up to get to where you're going. Your destiny is guaranteed. The only way that you don't achieve your destiny is if you quit on yourself. The only way you don't make it to the end is if you quit on yourself. Now think about it. Did I want to sit up and say it was going to be easy? Did I want to sit up and say that, that, that you're going to get to a point you got it all figured out? Did I want to sit up and say everybody's going to like you? Did I want all of those things? Put those things out of your head. No, everybody's not going to like you. No, you're going to have more people probably whispering behind your back than you have lifting you up. That's just the nature of the human existence right now. Everybody's got this bitterness, this angriness, this negativity, this envy, uh, this jealousy in them so deeply that they can't get focused on building themselves because they're so focused on bringing everybody else down to where they feel they are. You've got to be willing to rise above that. Don't give it energy. Don't give it your attention. Don't give it your time. You focus on what's in front of you and you make up in your mind right now. 
Tell yourself right now, I'm built for this. There are going to be some things that you're going to set out to do that you don't even have the understanding or know-how of how, but tell yourself that you are built for this. Say, I'm built for this. What I'm not, I will become. And that's the only thing you need to know and understand. I'm built for it. And if I'm not what I need to be, I'll become it. Because you get who you are. You don't get what you want. You get who you are. So if something that you've been wanting and wanting and wanting and you don't have it and you've never gotten it, now there are times we get stuff. We go out, we go get it. And then we do, do things to lose it. Not talking about you. I'm talking about the person that's been grinding for 15, 20 years and they can't get it, but they grinding, they working for it, they trying, they got their eyes set on it. It's something inside of you or something required of you that you have not yet become. And it may be something you don't recognize. Find out, look at yourself, examine yourself, look at what you want and say, okay, what does it take to be this? What does it take to have this? What does it take to acquire or obtain this? And then look at yourself and say, okay, out of all these things, what do I already have? And then when you look and see what you have, then you turn around and say, okay, I, these are the things I need to build and work on. These are the habits and the rituals and the capacities I need to build. And then you start working on it. When you become it, you will have it. And don't be put off by delay. I tell people all the time, delay does not mean denial. Everybody's got these timetables. Well, and they'll tell you, well, you've been trying for three years and I'll try another 10 if I have to. Because what I can tell you is my faith and my effort have never failed me. It's taken some time because I think so crazy and so big in comparison to the average person that I run into a lot of difficulty getting where I'm going because the distance is so long. But I know that effort and faith has never failed me, ever. The universe absolutely cannot fail when you apply the effort and the belief in yourself to pull those things that you desire towards you and you are, you are effectively moving toward it, the universe has no choice but to move towards you with what you're asking of it. You better learn how to work this faith. You better learn how to demand excellence from yourself. And you better learn how to understand that you're going to fall and you just have to get back up. Whatever you do, whatever you do, don't quit. Do not quit. Uh, that's it. I'm going to check out of here. By the way, there's a link in the uh, post uh, for book number 20, which is Critical Mass, which is about uh, what I just talked about and a whole lot more about life mastery, about reaching critical mass, that point in life where you have all of the components necessary to live the life that you have set out to live. And whatever that is for you, it's different. Everybody's critical mass is different. But whatever it is for you, it's that point when you have all of the components to produce the results you're looking for. And this book is a comprehensive guide to that. You can pre-order it now and um, enjoy. Uh, that's it. That's the thing. That's all I got for today. Uh, keep your head up. Have a great weekend. I'll be checking in with you guys probably on my, uh, either Sunday or Monday. Keep your head up. Uh, for those business owners out there, if you're not already a part of the Black Business Owners Network, you need to get over there. We got some great things going on. We're building something fantastic. Um, get over there. I see a couple of the uh, members. I even see one of the admins on here. Uh, I don't know if he's still on, but he, he definitely stopped in. Uh, what's up, Derek? Anyway, life is out there waiting on you to give it instructions, and it will pay whatever price you demand of it. When you say stay fast to it, when you stay committed to it, when you truly believe it's possible and you move toward it, life will pay whatever price you demand of it. I love you guys. As I always say, I'm going to die on E. I'll see you guys later. I'm out. Peace.